was going to shut it off. So, okay, this is going to be part two. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to take off from there. Um, it's going to have to be uh, two videos today. So I'm just going to take off from there. So, um, it's going to have to be uh, When we purpose in our heart not to be defiled and to claim the righteousness of Christ as ours, we stand strong against Satan's accusations. What then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but believed him up, who delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Um, Pastor Danny, yeah. I have a favor to ask. What can it be? <laughs> Just... Go to Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries and um, share this next video that I'm working on, if you would. I don't know how. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. So I'll do it. I'll do it Go later. to Thy Kingdom Come. I'll do it later. Thank you. Yeah. Um, application. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ daily that you stand in His righteousness. Set your will, determining that you will not be defiled by sin, by the world, or by Satan's accusations. If you give me just a moment, I need to share this video. So that goes on to a couple other Facebook pages. If you give me just a moment, and then I will continue. trying to shut it off and um, my first video shut down so uh, next time I guess I'll just let it ring so we are on spiritual warfare we are on the armor of God we are on number three and that is the gospel of peace I think we might have somebody here Hello, Mississippi. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'll Have a seat. Down. I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. I'm doing spiritual warfare so you can sit and join. It's good to see you. Kind of hot Okay. Well, you say, just... You I just, just want to say hi and give, just get some water. Okay. I don't get paid till tomorrow. Okay, well, you can sit and listen and whenever you um, are ready to go, just take off. Okay, it's good to see you though. Good to see you too. Okay, um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for Mississippi. Father God, thank you for bringing Mississippi in the house today. Lord, we just ask that you bless her, bless her abundantly, bless her in her coming, bless her in her going. 
And um, Lord, just um, again, I just pray that you open our eyes, ears, and heart to know who you are. And um, just thank you for what you're doing in her life and that you protect her and guide her and, and love her and comfort her in Jesus' mighty name. So, Okay, yeah. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing here. Okay. You can hang I, out. Or I'm going to go can... smoke my cigarette today. I haven't smoked like three hours. Okay. Have a good day. You too. I love you. I love you too. Okay. See you later. See you later. Bye. Whoa, the floor's kind of... Yeah, I know. Kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah we're, it's we're getting it worked on. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Huh? All right, bye. Bye. Um, <laughs> we're gonna keep moving. I'm not missing a beat. I'm gonna just keep putting one foot in front of the other. This is this is spiritual warfare 101. This is spiritual warfare real time. Um, the devil would like to come against anything and everything that's spoken out here. He doesn't like the word to go out. He doesn't like the truth to go out. He doesn't like people to raise up. He doesn't like us to be victorious. He wants to shut it down. And so he's going to use he's going to use phone calls. He's going to use whatever. And um, so, anyways, we're going to just keep it moving. And thank God for what He's doing, and that we are victorious. In all things. All right. Uh, for those who have the book, back to the book. We're on page 22 and um, pay, or, um, number three. And the number three is the gospel of peace. This is the third piece of armor we're talking about. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. On your feet, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Your feet must be positioned in battle formation. The Roman sandals were leather thongs with spikes on the bottom for flexibility, mobility, and firm grip to hold a position while engaging the enemy. Warfare principle. Never back down once you have engaged the enemy. Hold your declared position. So those, those, those sandals had spikes in them and they gave them a good grip. And the gospel of peace gives us a good, firm stand. And, um, and when you engage the enemy, you never, you never back down. You never stop. And it's, it's much easier for people to understand that if you're on a battleground and, and you're, you, shots are being fired at you, you would not turn around and run away. You would keep, in, you would keep facing the enemy. You would keep standing your ground. It's the same way spiritually. When the devil comes at, at us with his fiery darts, we keep the shield of faith up there. We stand firm with our shoes, our gospel of peace. We do not back down. We do not run away. So um, readiness or preparation is the place we come to when we understand the full significance of the gospel of peace, which reconciled us to God and our fellow men. This gospel also is a declaration of the defeat of Satan's entire kingdom. Um, it says, what truths can you glean concerning this piece of armor from these verses? I'm just going to give you the verses. Um, Luke 12, 35. John 14, 27. Romans 10, 15. Ephesians 3, 3. 8 through 10, Colossians 1, 20 through 23, and Colossians 3, 15. you to try or not try actually I'd like you to answer it um, are you hearing me talk like am I echoing am I my voice repeating my voice right after I say it or is it okay no weapon formed against me will prosper no weapon formed against this word will prosper. So it's repeating itself? Oh my. Okay. 
Oh, it's fine. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, good. All right, I'm just going to keep going. And guess what happens? If this is a complete disaster, guess what I do? I'll just do it again. And next time, we'll let the phone ring. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, all right, page 23. Um, there is a declaration of your victorious stand in the gospel of peace. A decla declaration, um, declare it. And um, this is a side note, but um, important to know because it's spiritual warfare. But life and death is in the power of the tongue. What is spoken. Okay? So you can speak death or you can speak life. And that's spiritual warfare as well. So we're going to decree right now. We're going to make a, a, a declaration. I declare that I have been purchased with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The record of sin has been canceled. I have been forgiven and stand in the righteousness of Christ. I am at peace with God. I choose to forgive all who offended me with the forgiveness of my Lord Jesus Christ. And I cancel their record of wrongs against me. I bless those who have cursed me and choose to do good to those who have despitefully used me. I stand firm in the gospel of peace. There, there he says, stand firm again in the gospel of peace and claim the boldness of Christ to fearlessly declare the gospel for which I am an ambassador. Um, something hit me there. Um, the forgiveness of Christ and forgiving those who offend us. Um, who, did, who did Jesus die for? He died for everyone. Did, did, were, there, were there those who came against him? Yes. They persecuted him. They killed him. Did he die for them? Yes, he did. Forgiveness is spiritual warfare. To not hold offense. To not hold yourself in bondage with bitterness. It sets you free when you forgive. That's a side note, but it's spiritual warfare. Number four, above all, take up the shield of faith so that you can extinguish all the flaming thoughts from the enemy. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. This one says, taking up the shield of faith. Okay, thank you, Bambi. It says, silence my phone during... Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm working out the kinks, okay? <laughs> so I wanted to use my computer as my, um, what I uh, record with, but that didn't pick up the, um, the videos, the, the worship music. So then I started using my phone again because that worked well when um, Pastor Danny was doing spiritual warfare. But, um, you know, there's, it's one thing or another, but we'll just, we just keep, going through it so anyways the next thing is um taking up the shield of faith and i have a note here this is so good i love 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 this okay so lift listen carefully if you didn't listen before listen now taking up the shield of faith means to pick it up regularly for battle the roman shield was carefully laid out so it could be used immediately when needed when preparing to enter combat this shield was soaked in water to extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. Okay, this is in the literal um, battlefield of the, the Romans, okay? They, they soaked their shield in the water to extinguish the flaming darts. Um, to the Christian, now you got to look at this spiritually now. I just love this. To the Christian, the word of God is the water 
the living water. That must soak that must soak our faith shield. In order to use our shield of faith, we must saturate ourselves in the truth of God's word. For this alone will quench the flaming thoughts and mental assaults of the enemy. The fiery darts of the enemy. If we soak ourselves in the word, the living word, it puts out the lies and the deception of the enemy. That's good. It's a really good visual there. What is faith? Faith is personal trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is having Christ's perspective. It is trusting him to meet our every need. In light of God's promise, our faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Um, you don't need faith for what you already know. You need faith for what you don't know. And um, there's, um, it says the assurance. Other scripture verse says the substance of things hoped for. Um, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I have a couple testimonies about the substance of things hoped for. So um, there is a lady that I minister to, and we met her, let's say, I, I'm just going to say a month and a half ago or so. And when we met her, um, she was sharing with us that how badly she wants to get out of the place where she lives because there's just so much violence and crime there. And... Um, and we gave her some um, advice to do certain things, to act on faith of, of that God is going to bring her to a new place. And one of the things I, the first thing I told her was to remove anything from her apartment that God told her to remove. And it wasn't but a real short time and she started sharing with me, God said to remove this. God said to remove that. God said to put these things in storage. And um, for six years, she said she's been wanting to get out of this place and just couldn't get out of there. Couldn't get to a new place. And um, she took the word that, that we gave her. And she, she the substance of the things hoped for. The substance that she was going to get a new apartment. So she did what God told her to do. And and just about a week ago, she shared with us that she has um, a new townhouse. So she went from a small, crime-riddled apartment building to a townhouse in suburbia. Thank God. All glory to God. That was the substance of faith. And um, so... She believed for it. God stood on his promise. Another testimony. This is um, a story Pastor Danny told. I love this story. But there was a woman um, years ago who wanted her kids back. And um, she, she went to him, you know, just pouring her heart out. You know, I want my kids. I want my kids. And he told her at that time, uh, she was living in a small house, and he said, what are you doing with that certain room in your house? And she said, well, that's the room that I use for storage. And he said to clean it out, paint it, and decorate it as your kids, as, as it would be for your kids. And um, she came back again, and she was, you know, I don't know how much longer later, but she came back again, she was crying, crying again. You know, I still don't have my kids back. And Pastor Danny asked her, did you do what I told you? And she said, no, I didn't do what I told you. He says, do what I told you. So she went back and she, um, she, she painted the room. She decorated the room for her boys. And um, a short period of time after that, she got a call and her children were returned to her. So that was acting in faith. Um, otherwise, you're acting in doubt, and um, God's gonna God's gonna um, be faithful to, to He's gonna be He's gonna stand on His promise to your faith. So that's the substance of things hoped for.
you don't need substance. You don't need to act on faith if, if you already know that something is going to happen. So you have to act as if though. Call that which is not as though it is. Okay, keep going. There are five, five ways to fulfill the command to take up the shield of faith. Number one, intake the word of God daily to strengthen your shield, which we just talked about. Soak in the word. Soak your shield in the word, the living word. Claim God's promises by faith as the basis for all actions. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We do not walk by flesh and blood. We walk by the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't walk by flesh. Walk by Spirit. Pick up the shield of faith immediately in combat. Be occupied with Christ and your fellowship with him. So if you do all of these things, anything that the devil can say to you, you know, is that you know that that's not what God would say. You know that that's not what God would do. It's going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute, um, how the devil talks to us. And um, so, but... If you know God's word and you're filled with his spirit, you've been born again and filled with Holy Spirit, um, you can stand on faith. Even though what we just talked about, it's, it's the substance. So it may look like we're losing the battle. It may look like the, the, the devil's um, being winning winning but um but when we stand on faith um we win we we are victorious the devil cannot win but if we believe him we believe the deception then we're going to be defeated the enemy has patterns in his strategy to undo our faith he's conniving um some common faith attackers are doubt. He will use doubt, like the woman who didn't paint her room. She had doubt, okay? Um, fear, passivity, unbelief, and apathy. These will be discussed in more detail in Chapter 5. Okay, so we're, that's going to come back around. Winning the battle of the mind. The battlefield is in the mind. So when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. Um, take the helmet of salvation. Since Christ is head over all things of the church, he is our head. The helmet of salvation represents our position of victory. Having received our deliverance from the kingdom of darkness, and our permanent position as God's child, as a child of God. The Roman helmet was crested in a stunning red to identify him. If you remember the Romans' helmets, they had this big red, kind of like a rooster thing up here, and that was to identify the Romans. Um, The Roman helmet was crested in a stunning red to identify him. As the Roman helmet identified in which army the soldier fought, so our salvation identifies us to the enemy as soldiers of the cross who march under the blood of the Lamb. The devil knows who we are, and he knows if we know who we are, okay? If we don't know who we are in Christ, he can... He, he can gain ground. He can defeat us. Okay? So when you stand like a Roman soldier with that big red, <laughs> um, what's, there's a word I'm looking for. I can't think of it right now. But, um, you know, when you stand with that, um, knowing who you are, he can't come against that. For he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom 
of his beloved son. Okay, I got another note that says this is really good. So listen up. The mind of man is the battlefield where Satan and his evil spirits contend against the truth by injecting thoughts, suggestions, false reasoning, speculations, distortion, and evil imaginations. The enemy fortresses that dwelt in the mind were destroyed and vacated at deliverance. At deliverance means uh, when Jesus died on the cross and when we grabbed um, salvation, um, when we were saved by grace through faith, when we grabbed that deliverance by faith, um, the enemy fortresses that dwelt in the mind were destroyed and vacated at deliverance, but now the mind must be restored to the excellent state God intended by rebuilding it with God's truth. So when we were born again, when we were saved, we were delivered. But now it's a process. It's a process. It, uh, there's scripture that talks about this, that we're working out our salvation. We, are, we go from glory to glory. He renews our mind. So we were walking one way and we were doing one thing and then we turned and we were, we were born again. Now we're a new creation and, um, and our salvation is going to be worked out. And, um, but the moment we were born again, we were given this armor, this, the all power and all authority. And now we're working it out. Um, okay. Um, for though we walk, let me see what, what time is it? Okay. Um, we had some distractions today, so I want to get through, um, all the spiritual armor today and we're getting there. So I'm just saying we're going a little longer than usual. Um, but I'll just keep it going. If you need to come back to it, just go back and listen to the um, video. Or if you have the book, read it yourself. Um, so the mind, of, the mind of the man is the battlefield. The battlefield is in here. So spiritually, this is the battlefield. And spiritually, we use the armor of God, all the things that we're talking about. Uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but divinely power, powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing that raises raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Um... I have a note here. It says, replace the lies with the truth. So know God's word. It said, when you know the truth, you will be set free. You have to take thoughts captive. If, if you're thinking something, if you're feeling something, um, you, you have to take it captive. Is this, is this the word of God? Is this what God would say? Um, if it doesn't line up with the word, then you have to um, um, reject it. Uh, I was trying to, every thought to the, oh, take it to the obedience of Christ. Bring it, bring it in line. That, you know, that, that is not the truth. This is the truth. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ is our salvation from our enemies. Um, it says, Zechariah's prophecy concerning Christ is fulfilled. Um, I'm going to read some scripture here. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from the old salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy towards our fathers 
and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, we were delivered in salvation, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Luke 1, 68 through 75. The helmet of salvation refers to our redemption and position in the kingdom of light as the soldier of Christ. Okay, how to deal with the enemy assaults against our redeemed. Need to read that again. How to deal with the enemy assaults against our redeemed position in Christ and our abiding union with Christ. Number one. Don't let the thoughts or darts take root. That will involve you in sin. Refuse them when they first hit. Don't let the thoughts or darts take root. Take the thoughts captive. Does that thought line up with the word of God? Don't let it take root. If it takes root, if you believe it or if you doubt something, it takes root and it grows in you. And then you believe a lie. Number two. Learn to identify the difference between your own thinking and the thinking of Satan and the demons. The enemy will and the enemy will often speak in the first person to make you think that it is your own thought. So he'll come to you with your own, like, like you think you're talking, you're speaking yourself, okay? And you will say things like, I am a failure. If you are hearing, if what you are hearing is not true and does not match the truth about God or who you are in Christ, then it is from the enemy, even if it sounds like your own voice. Because if it doesn't line up with God's word, it's, it's the enemy, it's not the truth. That's the first way that he gets us. And we believe and we believe it. The most common way Satan gets to you is through your mind. If he gets your mind, he has invaded your being. Immediately recognize his lies and speak truth in their place. This is the warfare principle of counterattack. The sooner the counter assault, the less damage is done. When the enemy attacks your emotions, submit your feelings to the Lord Jesus Christ and claim his, his emotions and life as your response. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, so there's two things I want to talk about there. Back to taking thoughts captive. One thing about God is... Um, Everything is opposite with God. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the rich say I I'm sorry. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say I am strong. Um, so God everything's opposite with God. And if you hear something, if you if it's your own mind, you say it or somebody says it to you, um, think the opposite of that. Um, if somebody says you're stupid, no, you're not stupid. You have the mind of Christ. Um, if somebody says you're um, unworthy, no, you're not. You're worthy. If it doesn't line up with God's word, reject it. That is your spiritual weapon. And don't, don't meditate on that, the deception. Meditate on the truth. Because the truth will set you free. So no matter what you say to yourself, no matter what somebody else says to you, um, think opposite. Go opposite. What does God say? He doesn't say things that tear us down. He says things that raises us up. He brings us from glory to glory. He doesn't keep coming at us and oppressing us and depressing us and compressing us. He doesn't do that. So it's a lie. And you don't have to change somebody else's mind. You have to renew your mind. God will do the work in them. You don't have to um, 
you don't have to get them to understand. Uh, God will get them to understand. So instead of talking to them and trying to, you know, get them to see it the right way, talk to God so that he'll get them to see it his way. Okay? Um, the next one was um, the emotions. When the enemy attacks your emotions, submit your feelings to the Lord Jesus Christ and claim claim his emotions and life as your response. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, we're reactionary people and we do feel things, okay? So something's said and, and, and it hurts, okay? Um, so I have to even take those emotions captive. I have to... Um, um, tell, I have to speak the truth. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. That's one thing I tell myself. Another thing I say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so I have to get to a place of, of joy because that's where my strength is going to come through. That's where my testimony is going to come through. And... <laughs> My husband's peeking at me through the window. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Okay, I love you, honey. Kisses. <laughs> um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, we're gonna we're coming to the end here. Take the sword of the spirit. This is the last one. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We use the offensive weapon of the spoken word of God. Notice that it says offensive. Who is it offensive to? It's offensive to the enemy. He hates it because he knows it's the final word. He knows that it's the authority above his authority. And he knows it. And he also knows if you know it or not. And if you don't know it, he has authority. But if you know, then he doesn't have authority. So it's offensive to him. And that's why he comes against this spiritual warfare because he does not want this to happen. He does not want me to tell you the truth. He does not want this to go out there. He wants you to believe the lies so that he can defeat you. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That is his job. He wants to separate you from the Father. And so, but I'm here... <laughs> Christ came to give you life and life abundantly. And because he dwells in me, I'm going to I'm going to come to give you life and life. I'm going to speak life to you. I'm going to speak truth to you. Okay, keep it going. We use the offensive weapon of the spoken word of God just as Jesus did in the wilderness temptation when he said to Satan, "Be gone, Satan." I say, "Be gone, Satan. Get ye behind me." For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him. Because the devil knows he has to. He knows the authority above him. Speak an, an, speak an appropriate verse against the lie or strategy, strategy of the enemy and it will destroy Satan's plan against you. Okay, what does God say about the power and the purpose of his word? Number one. Those who love thy law have great peace, and nothing causes them to stumble. Um, great peace. People think that peace is something that they achieve, okay? Um, the truth is, peace isn't a thing. Peace is a person. He's the prince of peace. And so when, when he resides, when he dwells in you, you have peace that surpasses human understanding. It's not a, a, a something that you've achieved by just acting or doing a certain thing. That's not peace. Peace is the prince of peace. S number two, 2 Timothy 2.15 challenges us to handle the word of God accurately and appropriately. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as the workman who does not need to be ashamed handling accurately the word or the truth. Show yourself approved. Know the word of God. When you know the word of God, the devil cannot come against it. When you know him, when you know the spoken word, and when you know 
the um, the relationship, the, the word, when you know Jesus Christ. Number three, the power of God's word is pointed out very graphically in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is, is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Roman sword was known all over the world as double-edged, extremely sharp, and a weapon to be greatly feared. It never left the side of the Roman soldier by day or by night. It was his primary offensive weapon. Um, so likewise, be we must know our weapon by reading and meditating on it day and night when wrestling against Satan and his army. Only skillful use of the word of God will suffice to defeat him. Satan trembles at God's word. He knows that it is the weapon that will cause him to flee. Yes, dear? Okay. Um, Pastor Danny just pointed something out to me a little bit ago. I was talking about offense, offense. And what I said about that is true and accurate, and, and you, can, you can still take that to the bank. But um, they were talking about offense, like offense, not, not offenses. Okay, we use the offense weapon, the spoken word of God. Yes, I said that wrong, the offensive um, weapon. Um, I'm not sure what I said about um, um, that. It was taking thoughts captive and things, but um, but we use the offense weapon of the spoken word of God, just as Jesus did in the wilderness. So, okay, the last thing, and we're going to be done with chapter two, is um, prayer, and um, that was one of that is one of the weapons, and um. And I wanted to, to get through the, the spiritual armor, which I did, but I want to um, touch on prayer next time because um, there's a lot to be said, and I don't want to just, I don't just want to quickly run through it. So I'm going to stop there on page 26 at prayer, and we're going to talk about that on Thursday, and then we'll, we'll hit um, chapter 3. So... Anyways, um, we had an interesting day. <laughs> we have two videos um, for the price of one. But um, anyways, I just want to thank you for being here. And um, we'll just... Um, Make sure there's nothing else. Oh, if um, if anybody wants to sow into the ministry, we have um, PayPal and we have Cash App. And if um, you want to do that, um, just reach out to me and I will get a link to you. So, anyways, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Thanks for joining. See you on Thursday. Bye.